Hey guys, welcome back. Day two of owning a FD RX7, because I'm an idiot. Um, I got the thing up in the air. We're gonna take a look at this oil leak and check out the rest of the underside of the car. So let's dive in. <laughs> She is, oh, she's dripping, like literally dripping from right there, which I'm assuming is coming off this oil pan gasket. Um, from what I've read and from what the previous owner told me, the oil pan gasket is the issue. Um, it's kind of a known thing on these, I guess. So we got some, we got some gray Permatex we're gonna be putting on it. We're not even gonna use a gasket. Um, from what I've been reading and the videos I've been watching, it's kind of, it's kind of hit or miss, like 50-50 people say use a gasket. Other people say just use Permatex because you're just, you're not gonna get it. It's gonna leak again. Um, the best thing would be to just use the RTV silicone stuff. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, so we got us a wastegate just kind of hanging out down here. And oh yeah, professional weld. That looks good. I don't know what, what this is here. Can't quite read that megan maybe yeah megan and then big old mid pipe coming back to this pretty nice little muffler um beat racing beat racing out of anaheim if uh any of my mazda friends know what that is tell me about it i, I don't know nothing about it um <clears throat> one of the other things that we were dealing with is this back end just feels really loose so I'm thinking I've got a bushing or something, some bushings maybe, a couple bushings back here that's just gone. So I'm gonna get my pry bar and just start trying to see if I can move stuff around, see which ones need to be changed. Cause this whole rear end just, it just kind of shifts around when you're driving it. So we want to fix that. <clears throat> and I'm thinking I may want to do something with this, these wires that's been relocated. I'm okay with it being relocated. It's just, the position of the battery in the trunk is kind of not ideal, so I may look into changing that. But first things first, we're going to drop this subframe because that is the only way to get to the oil pan. Yay! guys so let me let me take a minute to explain what I just did um, in order to get to this oil pan you got to drop the subframe a lot of people take the subframe completely off uh, but that requires you to have to go in for an alignment afterwards so let me show you what I did so my thought process was why disconnect all of your suspension when you can just lower the sub the subframe down I don't know if this is gonna work to get the actual pan out and cleaned off and everything, but 
I really don't see why it won't because I've got a couple inches that I could even I could even get this down just a little bit more if I needed to but I've got plenty of room to get all these bolts I've got plenty of room to get in here with a, a scrape or a razor blade to clean up the surface and everything and then when I'm done bolt it back up and the suspension is exactly where it should have been to start with obviously I'll have to make sure that I get you know get my bolt holes lined up perfectly and all that stuff but there's rust marks on this stuff so I really shouldn't have to try too hard to get everything lined up I don't think so plus I think yeah so that's an alignment pin right there so realistically oh yeah that's like a little conical alignment pin with a, a hole so yeah this should just go back together pretty pretty easily I'm hoping at least I mean I, I could be I could be whining in a little bit but realistically I think this is gonna work um, I dropped the um, steering rack took the the two 12s on each side so four 12 millimeters on each side um, I think actually no those were 14 sorry so 14 millimeters here I took the sway bar loose just so it didn't add any extra tension bolts in the back on each side then there's two nuts on the fronts anyways if you can get this far I think we can get this oil pan out without having to drop it further so let's just dive in and see if we can get it off all right so I got all the bolts out um, one thing I found when I was doing this this thing's actually already got poly mounts so that's pretty cool I think the factory ones are notorious for for leaking oil or something like that so uh, the other thing that I discovered is that when um, when I was taking these out these actually already have some uh, silicone on them right there on the tip so that tells me this pan's been off you know obviously it's been off I mean it's a rotary that's got 125 K on it this engine's probably been rebuilt four times I mean seriously but uh, I think what happens a lot of times is people forget to chase the bolt holes with well that one's actually pretty clean but they forget to chase the bolt holes with um, a, t a tap which cleans out all the old RTV uh, before you put on the fresh RTV either way this is gonna be fun to try to take off because it's essentially glued down at this point all the bolts are out and it's still just hanging there so I'm gonna grab um, something to shove up in here and try to pry on it gently I don't want to warp the pan or anything like that that'll cause us to not have a good seal later but yeah so we're gonna get this pan dropped and get it cleaned up the oil pan is off and you can see this sucker was glued on I mean this RTV is thick so um, I kind of distorted the oil pan a little bit trying to get it off you can kind of see I had to pry a little bit to get under it I'm not too happy about that um, you know without it being perfectly flat it may not seal good and we may just be doing this again in two weeks so um, I'm gonna kind of weigh my options if I want to try to straighten this if I want to just try to order one I've heard there's a gusset kit that like you put on the original and it like strengthens the the rim or whatever so I don't know I'm gonna look into some options there um, <clears throat> But if you're doing this job and you want to finish it up and you didn't rip this thing up or bend it up or whatever, um, it's as simple as pulling everything, pull, you know, just pull this thing out. It'll come out through this hole for sure now. Um, matter of fact, let me just one-handed pull it out here. There you go. This thing comes right out. Surprised at how much oil is still in the pan after I drained it. That's kind of that's interesting. Yeah, so there's your little pickup tube. Um, <clears throat> we'll say we got a that's our oil pump drive and a little screen deal looks good. Don't see any issues there. Everything looks pretty good. I mean, it's just dirty. So I'm gonna scrape this with a razor, and I'm gonna chase these holes with a tap. And then, like I said, it's basically just reverse what I just did. It's as simple as just picking this frame up and bolting it all back in. So I hope this video helped you. Um, if it didn't, I'm sorry. All right, so that's it for now, guys. Like I said, we got the oil pan off. Um, I just gotta figure out if I'm gonna straighten it out or if I'm gonna try to replace it. I don't know yet, but that's gonna wrap it up for this video on the next one. 
I think we're either going to be diving into the rear subframe to try to sort that out or sorting out the coolant issue. So um, the good news is, like I said, the oil pan's off. It's out. We'll get it cleaned up, uh, re re-siliconed and put back in, and that'll be one more thing checked off the list to get this sucker to drive. So thanks for watching.